What I'm going to do is cut out this little boy from the background. And like anything in Photoshop, there's many ways that you can do things. There's not a right or wrong way. I've learned now this is what works for me and I've tried different techniques. So what I'm going to do is unlock the first layer and I'll click on the lock button here and I've unlocked it. What happens then is my contextual toolbar appears on the left-hand side and these are my go-to tools. The selection tools over the years in Photoshop have advanced so much to when I first started. But what I'm going to do is actually go and remove the background and see what that does. I'm going to come up here, click on Remove Background, and I let Photoshop do the grunt work and see what it It hasn't done a bad job of the selection. If I was looking for something that needed a little bit more detail, I would spend time masking and getting the edges right. But this is going to be a small element that I will put into a composite. So I tend to look at it and think, okay, what can I do with this? Does it need to be so particular in the selection? But I'm going to zoom up and have a look and see. There's nice detail in there. There's a few other tricks that I can do. And I'll put a link in the description showing you how I use the grey layer to help me see any of the edges or the little artefacts that are left behind. But the main purpose of this is extracting this element and then saving it as a PSD or TIFF, personal preference. But why I do that is it has the mask attached. And so if I put this on a background, I've already got that mask there and I can do a little bit of tweaking. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to use this background and place that little boy sitting on the doorstep. I'm going to go over to the little boy that I've cut out and I'm going to drag him over onto that background. Then let it sit into the background and I'll just place him there. He's a little bit big, so I need my transform tool. And I'll just size him up very quickly. Not going to be too fussy. Though it's hard not to be fussy. I'll position him there. He's still a little bit big. I'll bring him down and I'll just do the tick. So let's say I've got him sitting there. I know he's not the right size. But if I wanted to blend in that grass, where his feet are, I can also use the mask that is attached to this layer. For example, I'll click on that mask, I'll get my brush tool and I'll just make it smaller. I'm going to be very, very rough on this. I'll just change my opacity and I can blend in some grass just there, which makes it easy. But this is where the benefit of saving your elements as a PSD with the mask attached is that if I come up and have a look, and it's very pixelated because I haven't done anything with this, but I can see there's some white fringing around his hair. So again, I'll click on the mask, I'll get my brush tool, I'll make that very small, and I'll just come in and do a quick little tidy up just there and I don't like that hair sticking out from his ear and you can see now I've got a little bit of a tidy up around this young munchkin. I like to save my cutout elements as a PSD or a TIFF, attach with the mask, then I can place it as a layer into my layer stack when I'm creating a composite and it gives me the flexibility of just going in on that layer and just masking away. In that video that I was talking about using the grey layer, I go into more detail about this, and this will give some good techniques of why I use this method.